Welcome to Lecture 13 in this series of lectures on statistical quality assurance and statistical process improvement. We're discussing gauge R&R studies, standard gauge R&R studies that involve multiple parts, multiple operators, and multiple observations for each part operator combination. In order to do statistical inference, that is make confidence limits, do hypothesis testing, make estimates, one must have a statistical model, a probability model that describes a, a mathematical uh, fiction as to how the data are generated, how measurements are generated. The one that we're going to make, a, make use of here is a so-called two-way random effects model. It's a generalization of the one-way random effects model that was used in module 11. The generalization here is basically so that we can take account of more than one part in the uh, analysis. The fact that we're not simply uh, remeasuring one part, but there are multiple parts. The model equation for the two-way random effects model says this. It says measurement K made by operator J on specimen I is made up of a sum of things. There is an overall average. There is an effect a constant that goes with part I. There is a effect, a constant that goes with operator J. There is an effect that is special to the combination of part I and operator J. And then there is a, an error, or an extra variation uh, that, that changes uh, measurement to measurement. Uh, the assumptions made in the random effects model are that these part effects are normal with some with mean zero and some variance sigma squared alpha. The operator effects are normal with mean zero and variance sigma squared beta. So there's sigma squared alpha, there's sigma squared beta. Uh, those are two of the so-called variance components. The effects that are specific to a particular part and operator combination are normal with mean zero and variance sigma squared alpha beta. So there are three variances that I've already mentioned here. Uh, and finally, the measurement specific effects, the epsilons, are normal with mean zero and some variance that I'm not going to subscript here. Uh, the variances, sigma squared alpha, sigma squared beta, and sigma squared are called variance components. And their sizes uh, govern how much variability there is observed in the measurements that are made in a uh, gauge R&R study. Uh, it's worthwhile to conduct the thought experiment of using this equation and writing out for uh, a small table of hypothetical data uh, how the, uh, the, the measurements are constructed. Uh, to give you just one example, if we were to talk about the first observation, the first measurement uh, made by operator one on part number one, this equation with I's and J's and K's as subscripts says that that observation is made up as a mean, a mu. So that mu goes there. But that mean also goes in every other 
measurement. So there's a mu that gets added as a component of each measurement. There is a part one effect, alpha one, that uh, is common to all measurements made for part one. So it would appear here, 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 and here in additive fashion. That is part alpha one belongs to part number one. Alpha number two would show up not on the first row but on the second row of that uh, table of, of cells. There is a beta one that goes with operator number one. So beta one would show up as an additive term here, 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 and here. And uh, there's a beta two that would show up in the second column, a beta two, a beta three that would show up in the third column. Cell one one, first row, first column, part one, operator one. There's a an alpha beta that shows up here and it shows up here. There's a different alpha beta that shows up in the other five. There are different alpha betas that show up. Uh, a different one in each of the other five cells. And then finally, this uh, first observation in the first row in the first column has an epsilon that only appears uh, for Y111. Uh, that second observation, that second measurement of Part one by operator one has has a different epsilon. It's epsilon one one two. Now the idea is that one thinks of these effects, alphas and betas and alpha betas and epsilon and epsilons as random variables uh, with different characteristic variances. So we're going back to uh, these assumptions. It says that parts have a variance that uh, is sigma squared alpha. Operators have a variant variance that is sigma squared alpha beta. Part operator combinations have a variance that is sigma sorry that is sigma squared alpha beta. Operators have a variance that sigma squared beta alone. And individual measurements have a variance that is uh, sigma squared. And those together govern what kinds of uh, differences one sees measurement to measurement to measurement. Uh, it's possible to argue that in this context, it is sigma. It's the variance of the epsilons. It's the within cell. The only things that change uh, within this cell are the two epsilons. The only things that change with any, within any one of those cells uh, are the corresponding uh, two epsilons. So it is the variability in the epsilons, it is sigma squared or sigma that measures within cell or repeatability variation. As it turns out, if one takes sigma squared beta and adds sigma squared alpha beta. That's a variance. Once one takes a square root of that, one gets a standard deviation. Uh, and that standard deviation is what would be seen in terms of variability. Uh, if many operators measured the same part or specimen once each, assuming there's no repeatability variation. Uh, so one might call that sigma reproducibility. If one adds underneath that square root a sigma squared, a, a repeatability variance to get this sum and then takes the square root, uh, one has a standard deviation 
that would be experienced by operators, many operators measuring a single specimen once each, uh, and that one might call the uh, R&R standard deviation. If you're looking at the uh, Vardaman and Job textbook, uh, actually it, in that textbook it's called Sigma over, overall uh, some years after the fact here, I think Sigma R and R is a better uh, is a better name for it. Uh, an interesting business here is that uh, to develop an interpretation of these alpha beta terms, uh, if one thinks it through carefully, the Alpha beta terms uh, actually play the role of nonlinearities of measurement. They, they play the role of device nonlinearities of, of, of measurement. Uh, one hopes when one is doing uh, an R and R study to conclude that sigma squared alpha beta is not very big. Uh, because if sigma squared alpha beta is large, then one has uh, real problems uh, in, in interpreting uh, measurements. If, it, if not only it's, is it the case that operators uh, vary operator to operator, but if operators' biases change part to part, uh, that that's a that's a it's a serious problem in, in terms of being able to really make good use of measurements provided in, a, in an industrial uh, context. Uh, we're going to talk about analysis of data from R&R studies uh, based mostly on uh, uh, analysis of variance. Uh, I'd like to warn you now that the, the formulas, the most the formulas in most common use, ones uh, appearing in the so-called AIAG uh, manual, are wrong. And uh, those of you taking uh, IE 361 at Iowa State University will be certainly required to use uh, formulas provided in these modules, not uh, ones that are implemented in, in many uh, court company spreadsheets because those formulas just don't estimate what, they're, what they purport to estimate. Uh, we'll continue with inference now based on this model in the upcoming modules.